Hey everyone, and I am so glad you started talking about books because I was just going to talk about um, this book series that I read anyway, so at least now I fit within the theme of the week. I started reading this book series, I think freshman year or sophomore year, I don't remember, but I remember Anna and I were shopping and it was outside Borders and they had a sale bin. And I was rummaging through the sale bin, and I found this book, and it's called Vampire. It's here's the, here's the first book. And I thought, oh, that's so stupid. It's Vampire Pirates. And I walked away, and then I'm like, it's $4. And it sounds kind of interesting. I think I'm going to get it. I have a problem. I like to read vampire novels. They're like my guilty pleasure. Vampires is by the British author Justin Somper, and unfortunately for me, I also have another guilty pleasure besides vampire novels, is um, children's books. This is for, I think, middle school. Basically, the premises for the book series is that there's these two twins, Connor and Grace Temps, and their father had recently passed away, their mother had been long dead. And when they were little, there was a sea shanty that their father used to sing to them when they were trying to sleep. It was about vampires and how, if you don't behave, I'm going to send you out to them, and such. So everyone thought vampires were um, mythical, but it turns out they're not. It's set in the year 2500, so it's set in the future, but it's not the future. I get confused while reading because I'll be like, oh, it's just like present. Honestly, Justin Somfort, you could have just had it be set in this time and I would have suspended my disbelief and been like, okay, this can exist. But there's nothing that's futuristic about it that makes it set in the future, so it bothers me. The two twins, when their father dies, they set out on a boat and they decide to go off on their own because their house, their lighthouse is going to be sold and they're going to be sent to the orphanage. So they decide to brave the world on their own. They are 14. And throughout the series, I forget that they are 14 because they are doing not 14-year-old things. Like, not, like, having sex and such. But I forget that they're 14. And I'm like, oh, it's something like, it's perfectly fine if she was 17. No, they're old. They're 14. During the storm, their boat, like, capsizes. And they're both thrown into the sea separately. And Connor is sent and he's picked up by normal pirates. Grace is sent out and she's picked up on a vampire ship. So it's two different kind of perspectives on piracy, kind of. Vampires obviously are like vampires, but they're pirates. Um, piracy is allowed, but it's not. It's, 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 there's a whole federation and there's laws and such. So it's not like Pirates of the Caribbean or the pirates that you see on the news today. It's more or less like they're a navy, kind of. Go with that. I don't own book two and three because my father thought it'd be stupid for me to own them, so I got them from the library. Justin Somper wrote for World Book Day a dollar book, which is like 60-some-odd pages, and it's its own little story that hangs on its own. And the funny thing is, is that he came out and said this story um, will never relate to the main story. He swore this book would never come back, and I was like, okay, it doesn't matter, because I read it, so, you know, whatever. But then in book five, they make references to this book, and I was just like, Justin Somper, I am American. If my dad didn't order this for me and get this in England, I wouldn't read this, and I wouldn't know what the heck happened. So, thank you. This is one of my prized possessions, because it says a pound on it. And Dad sent away for book four because Britain books come out six months ahead of our books. I mean, this is the English edition of the fourth book. And I think their books are cooler than ours because it has, like, this. Like, how cool is that? It says pounds on the back, so it's one of my other prized possessions. My other two prized possession books happen to be a Latin Bible that's entirely in Latin. And then on the other side of the pages, it's translated into English. And so for me being a Latin nerd, that's, like, huge for me. I have a first edition copy of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. It's kind of rare, and I got it by accident. When I started reading the Harry Potter series, I got them in paperback. And then I started getting the later books when they would come out new in hardcover, and I didn't like the mismatched set. So I asked my dad to um, buy me the um, 
hardcover copies of the earlier editions of the books. And he did. He sent away for them so they were cheaper. And book four came in and she sent a soft cover copy instead of a hard cover. And I already had a soft cover copy. He emailed her again and she said, Oh, I'm sorry for the mistake, I'll send you a, a new one and it happened to be the first edition copy of Harry Potter. I'm very proud of that. The main threat is that one of the vampires on the vampire ship rebelled and he wants to the live his life like a vampire and not like a decent vampire that they do in the book so he's psychotic this is book five book six i got yesterday yesterday and it came in and it's so good this is the last book there's so many loose ends for it being a last book it confused me and I don't want to, like, spoil them, like, the end, like, I doubt you'd read it, but there was at least ten different questions that was brought up that wasn't answered, and I was like, well, how can you say that this is the last book if you're leaving it that open? One of my major problems with the book series is that six books take place over a year. Book one happens in, like, a week. Book two happens in a week, but it doesn't feel like a week when you're reading it because... It should be longer than that, because they're going to school at the Pirate Academy, so it's really... it doesn't make sense. Book three, I think, happens over, like, a month. Book four happens over a month. And then book five is, like, six weeks. That's definitely said in the book because of some things. But then the author takes an entire six months break and then starts up this book. It starts up the final book. Who does that? Yeah. So nothing happened in that six months when they're preparing for a war? It doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, the whole time thing got to me. Because basically he wanted it to happen a year later from the day that they departed from their house. So it like cycled back. But he could have planned his time better. I need to stop. I get really passionate about books when I start talking about them. And so I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that you have to listen to me rant about this series. It's really good, and like I said, it's my huge guilty pleasure, and now it's over. Bye, everyone! I think I have seven different series about vampires currently on my bookshelves.